Thank you. Uh, the disciples and apostles with the power that Jesus Christ gave them are not able to work in the capacity of the mega fivefold ministry of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him. Right? They cannot. Fivefold ministry of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him, right, uh, are called wonderful, counselor, mighty God, the blessing Father, and the Prince of Peace. I'm going to repeat that, make it more clear. The fivefold ministry of Jesus Christ, which God gave him, right? Where he got the accolades, are, are called the accolades, are, 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 what would I put it? Are, 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 is the result of the names that um, Isaiah prophesied that men would call him. So all the slides I showed you, all the things that I mentioned, the earth and the sea, the stars, the clouds, what else? And man, right? When we look at the awesomeness of those things, that's what led to the fulfillment of the prophecy that Isaiah made in Isaiah 9 verse 6, that he would be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Okay? Those, th those things that Jesus did in the heavens, Cause man to glorify him. Call him wonderful. Call him counselor. One of the things that separates God from man is his ability to create or make or form things that nobody else can. And we just went through some of those. Because God is sovereign, he would not give man the ultimate power to do things that they are not able to comprehend nor understand. Yes. No, um... <clears throat> yes. So, um, th and thank you for um, watching those slides. Yes. Um, God will not gi give it. <clears throat> it, 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 it. For example, God don't want to give man the ability to make seas or stars. And they cannot explain it. He then would have to give them the ability to explain it. And if they can explain it, then I guess they will be God. Only Jesus Christ can explain the body of the water that he puts there, the amount of stars he put up there, and why they cannot collide, and why the earth and the other planet around cannot collide. Uh, collide? Collide, right? Why they cannot be banging on each other. Because he is God. He knows the chemistry. He knows the, the science behind it. He knows the power behind it. Everything. He knows the distance. He knows everything. The work of the ministry was given to, to men to do the natural work of God and the ministry. God is love. God is kind. He will show and give love and kindness to mankind. But God will not give man the ability nor power to make man and to breathe into the natural liberty of life. Let me tell you what just dropped in my mind. The old boy Satan trick. You know, the devil, the devil uses the, 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 the word of God against Jesus. That was the biggest mistake he made. Because he never has, he never have the power to use the word. Jesus has the power, so he used but the same word against the devil, and he was subdued to the word of Jesus because Jesus was authorized to speak the word because he is the power, he is the potentate, he is the almighty God. So the devil have to subdue to the, the, the same the word when Jesus used it. Now, I think it was Simon the sorcerer when when Philip went down to Samaria, to Samaria and he preached Christ and the people. The people believed and they were, were baptized and they received the Holy Ghost. Peter, I mean, not Peter, Simon the Sorcerer um, offered to buy or to purchase the power from Peter. So when he lay hands on folks, they received the Holy Ghost. I don't know. I want to say this and listen. This is just 
something I'm saying. I'm not saying that's what it is. So please don't run away and say, I said Simon the Sorcerer wasn't saved. I'm just looking at from the standpoint where Simon the Sorcerer, if he was not 100% saved, he was trying to buy that power to go back to do his old craft. Maybe he couldn't make money. Lay hands and fall boy, and get the Holy Ghost. Hey, come on, you want the Holy Ghost? Come on. Just like we, we, I, I heard, I was told, um, this, this minister, there was a convocation going on, and this minister, and they were, the, 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 some saints were tiring at the altar for the Holy Ghost. This minister went over to her sister, because she shared she, she, she the testimony. And she told us that the, 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 the minister is telling her to repeat what he says. But she were taught before, that's not all you get the Holy Ghost. So we have some people that in the church sometimes are the, the, the old titles and offices, but they are moved by the devil. The devil is in them. They are doing things for glorification, for promotion, and the rest. Want to look good? Want to be holy? Want to be gifted? And they are not moved by God. And the sister said she did not do it. Yes, and so Simon might have wanted it to go do his thing so he could get more money. However, Peter rebuked him, and, put, and I think he pronounced a blindness on him. He said, don't end up money perish. Okay? Now, so here it is. God did not give man the ability to do this. Can you imagine if God had given man the power to make man Lord of mercy? He would have been crazy upon earth. Hmm? So man said, you know what? Let's get rid of these men. I mean, get, get rid of these mankind. Make some new mankind. We want the red man now. We are, we are tired of black and white folks. We are tired of, of Chinese and Indian. Let's wipe out the whole entire creation that God did. We are going to make our man. Hmm? Woo, Jesus. And you tell me God is not the, the, the wisest there is, and the all powerful and the potentate, the all, the all powerful one who knows the minds of mankind. If God had lost it for a moment and give mankind the power, we would have been gone on time. New man, new mankind, what a new creation. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. All right, let me try to take this up. Oh, Lord. That's why he stands out. Now, um, let me run down real quickly to Genesis 2 and look at just a few verses. Verse 7 says, and the, and the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life, and man became a living soul. See what separates the clay from being just clay? The breath of life. Man became a living soul. Man don't have the power to do that. All right. Um, and how that how, how that happened here in um, verse verse uh, what, eighteen? It says. Let me read from about, about from verse seven, uh, verse uh, fifteen to seventeen. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God found. Sorry, and the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of the good knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So um, Adam was given task. He was given a commandment and instruction from God when God made Adam. God did not make Adam to chill. God did not make Adam to be lazy. Even God, when he made man, he made man to work. So the mega fivefold ministry entails the work of God. The fivefold ministry entails the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when God made man, God put man to work. So if there's any lazy spirit, lingering in the body of Christ, let's rebuke them in Jesus' name. Get them out of the church. Get them out of our lives. Get them out of our homes. We were created to work. 
If we don't work, we're going to be lazy. We will able to be productive to our society, our homes, not our churches. Hmm. Think about that. So God never made man to be lazy. God made man to work. The first thing that God does was to put man to work. Where? In the garden. So man's job was not an engineer at first. It was more of a landscape. Gardening. Hello? Alright, let's see what the um, verse 18 says. Hmm. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him an helpmate. So God is taking care of his creation. So in verse uh, 27 of Genesis 1 it says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. That's Genesis 1.27. And I want to end this portion with this song. Psalms 139, 139 and verse 4, it says, we're talking about the last slide we put up there, we're talking about mankind. He said, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works. Did I say work? Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. In other words, the psalmist is saying, I will not forget that I am marvelously work, I mean created, marvelously formed, marvelously made, fearfully and wonderfully made. That's why they call him wonderful. And other things he does, they call him counselor. His counsel is to us is, 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 is awesome. Praise God. Uh, let me see if I have any, any, uh, okay, I'll give it to you in the next segment. But it is very important that we understand the mega fivefold ministry. Oh, 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 this thing that is, it is that, that, that ministry that God gave to Jesus Christ that nobody else was able to do except him. But Jesus Christ get, gave some power to his apostles and disciples to do some work. All right, before I, I go on to the, um, the next segment here, which is going to be the uh, five-fold part of the ministry, um, there, there's uh, some things I want to point out here. That uh, Jesus' is uh, mega fivefold ministry complements um, the prophetic names that he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of, of Peace. And also, the mega fivefold ministry basically separates the fivefold ministry and puts it in perspective. Like I said, you want glory, the glory of the sun is different from the glory of the moon, and so is the glory of the fivefold ministry, and the glory of the make a fivefold ministry not the same. Okay. All that the people of God are blessed to do, the Lord Jesus Christ had done them all. He actually gave them the power to do those works. But there are works that only God or the Lord Jesus Christ can do, as touching the earth, seas, clouds, stars, and mankind. Only Jesus can do those works. He 
formed them. He called them into being. Hello? Alright. Let me move on to the next segment, which is going to be the five-fold let me get uh, my, in, uh, my, in, my information over there, please. Thank you so much. Um, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to keep within a good time. Bless your heart. Now we have, uh, I'm going to make this as brief as possible. So we have the fivefold ministry, which consists of apostle, prophet, Evangelist, pastor, and teacher. And so I'm going to um, briefly go into these areas by, um, by topics or uh, office. And this first one we could be, be, be looking at is the apostle. And the, the, the base scripture for uh, the gifted that was specific five gifts to the church is in Ephesians chapter 4. Now, I want to look at a few scripture verses here to somehow, I said somehow, try to give a biblical definition of uh, I would put it this way, might be put it um, of some signs or something that, um, some attribute of an apostle. So let me see what, what I come up with here. Now, in, in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 12, it says, Truly, the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience, in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. Truly, the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience, in, in, in signs, and wonders, and mighty deeds. So, some people question, and it's, it's, it's good to ask certain questions. What are, how, you, how, would you, how would you define an apostle? Well, there is no, in, 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 my, in my opinion here, there is no direct way. The, uh, in other words, there's no one way or uh, two ways of, 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 of being able to answer them. Look at verse uh, 12 of 2 Corinthians 12. Truly, the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience, in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. So, there, there are just some things that an apostle will do. I'm talking about an apostle of Jesus Christ now. Not a man-made apostle. There are just some things that apostle, an apostle will do that distinguish him from others. Okay? Uh, and while we have things that overlapped among the other offices like uh, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teachers, we have something that overlap. There are just some distinct thing that each does, right? So there are some there are just some signs. I don't know what those signs are, are what all those signs are, but uh, it said the signs of an apostle were wrought among the people in patience and uh, in wonders and mighty deeds. Acts two forty three it says, and fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Many. He didn't list everything. Many. And the next one says in Acts 5 verse 12. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's boat. Now, um, some people is of the belief that if you are an apostle... There are just some things that you have to do. It's just something that you have to do that, hey, yeah, I think I'm convinced this, this person is an apostle because there are just some mighty deeds that God performed 
during that person's ministry. And those are the things that we just read. Signs, true signs, true wonders, and even true patience. You see? So sometimes people are looking for this humongous um, act or demonstration. You know, like when Naaman was, 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 was filled with leper, and they, 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 he went to the king of Israel, I think, and then while he, he was there, Elijah, I think it was Elijah was there, and the king was upset with the other king. Why are you send this man to me? I'm paraphrasing. Am I a doctor? Who am I? But he sent him to the king, the letter to the king, because that was the protocol. Then the, the Isaiah heard, uh, no, Isaiah, Jer uh, um, was it Isaiah? Isaiah, I think it was Isaiah. No, Elijah, Elijah. Elijah heard about it. Went to talk, to speak to the king, and the king gave him over to Elijah. So the damsel went down, a damsel went down with, with Naaman. Elijah said, man, look, go and dip yourself seven times in the Jordan, in the river. The, the, the water was dirty, you know. But I think it was, ne Naaman didn't want to do that. He wasn't feeling pleased nor comfortable for, for a man of his caliber to go down in that dirty water. To be healed? Guess what he was thinking? Probably he was thinking that and the king was thinking that that the prophet would go there and clap his hand. Come on! Be healed in Jesus' name! That's the mentality they had. But in passion, God sometimes demonstrates his power. So the damsel that went with Naaman said, Hey master, if the prophet had told you to do some great things, wouldn't you do it? Just obey the prophet. And dip all the time that he said dip. And see what happened. So Naaman put away his pride. Dip one time and dip two times. And he dip three times. He dip four times. He dip five times. He dip six times. Still full of leper. Mary was just frustrated. Damn state. The damn probably didn't speak this time. He just do like this. Meaning one more day. Frustrated Naaman. Went down. Came back up. Brand new. He was ill. So some people are looking for this in Jesus' name. God don't never always work like that in his people. So I want to encourage those apostles. Don't be motivated by people's expectation of you and do things that God did not authorize you to do. Don't do it man's way. Don't do it based on the norm. This is how prophet does, I mean apostle. This is how apostle do, do things. So I am going to abide in it. No. As a gifted person, since I'm talking about an apostle now, if you are an apostle, obey the leading of the chief apostle who is Jesus Christ, who gave you the gift. You did not earn the gift. You are to operate in the gift by the grace of God and the influence of Jesus Christ. See, so if a prophet go, if an apostle go there, you don't have to do that. The devil is alive. That was a sign for him to do. <laughs> Lord help me. These days people are copycats from the pulpit, you know. Copycats. Meow, meow. <laughs> Jesus help me, Holy Ghost. Woo, Jesus. So, one meow, meow, another meow. Really? No. Don't copy what the other apostle does. He may have been moved by the Spirit of God to do that. You weren't moved. You want the meow like the meow prophet apostle before you. The devil is a liar. You are not authentic. You are a thief and a robber. Oh, Lord. I'm going to calm down because I'm trying to give you information. I don't want to reprove you that hard. All right? But sometimes I have to reprove what I'm instructing. For the word of God is given for all those things. Reprove, rebuke, instruction in all righteousness. So if you see me go off sometime like that, it's as I'm led, okay? But I must let you know so we can abide in our calling and do the right thing. All my time is... Pardon me? All right, not much time, right? Okay, 
So, I got to, um, can I go in the juice right now? Because my time. I, I, I really need to start a little late because, uh, you know, I apologize for that. But, I hope uh, next time I can, I can get into the juice of, of this. So, um, I'm not going to go much into, into the apostles here. But just so we know, we don't, you don't have to do like the other man do. You want to perfect your work. You want your work to stand out where God is glorified. When you copy and imitate others, you are taking it for the, you are doing it for your glory. You are doing it because of self. You want to be seen as and to be recognized as. It's not the gift was not given to you for your glory. That's why he never called rich folks and give it to them. Only are no, all noble folks. He called folks like some of us. Nobody had cared for us. So don't use the, the, the gift for, for, for self-glorification. Use your gift to glorify God. If he said, clap your hands for the miracle, glory to God, clap your hands in Jesus' name. If he says, stamp your feet, stamp your feet. But don't sneak up and eavesdrop at, at, at what the previous apostle did and you be like the seven sons of Sceva in the name that Paul speak. Come on, I adjure you. Come out in Jesus' name. The, de the, de the, de the devil say, uh-uh, not so fast. Jesus I know. Paul I know. Who are you? By the time they had to tell them who they were, <laughs> hallelujah, they were possessed with the devil. And how he did, the devil did it? The devil stripped them naked. There's a phrase that I want to use that I don't want to take out of context. But naked. 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 And went in them because copycat. The spirit of copycat will destroy an, an apostle or a prophet or an evangelist or a teacher or a pastor. If we go around copying the way other people manifest and operate, we are not glorifying God, and a wrong spirit will overtake us. I can't say more about this because of time. Praise God. But I gotta just like wrap them up the, wrap them up the same way. Speak on them all the same way. Praise the Lord. I did myself injustice. I do you injustice. I come back to you with all these on the fivefold ministry. I, I, I don't want to promise, but I hope. Praise God. But uh, I, I want to use the same trend to, to say to all the, the fivefold ministry. Um, give those who function in them, please understand what, what the purpose is, understand what the goal is, right? The goal is to do what? To unify the body of Christ, okay? All that we do is to unify and to edify the body of Christ. Bring the body of Christ in unison, in oneness, in togetherness. Uh, there is a level of work that we have to do. Okay, I cannot go take, get my notes now. Time has uh, far, far spent. So I'm going to tie this thing up in a bungle. Just like how the fivefold ministry is a bungle. It's a, it's a, it's a combination of, of gifts that work in unison. So I'm going to tie this all thing to get together. So we, can, we have to first understand what is the purpose of our gift? What is the purpose of th these five significant gifts? They all have the same goal. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. That's the goal. So none supersedes the other. 